Notes on malignant transformation. Dear all, I hope you find this lecture useful. First, we're going to talk about what is malignancy. I guess we explained this part before, but I'm going to mention some definitions like differentiation, which is extent to which neoplastic cells resembling the normal ones. Malignancy or anaplasia, which is total loss or lack of differentiation. The word cancer is not just meaning malignant, it just means that there is no differentiation at all. It is not the reverse of differentiation, it's a category or a grade. That's how we grade any tumor. As we said before, there are four grades. In general, benign tumors are well differentiated without a grading system. Malignant tumors range from well differentiated to totally undifferentiated types. Features of benign tumors, as we said before, benign tumors do not spread. They do not recur if well excised. They are not dangerous unless in four points or four positions. If they arise in a vital organ, like the brain, if they arise in a whole organ, like the intestine causing obstruction, if they produce hormones as in the tumors of endocrine glands, or if they are changed, frankly, to malignant ones. Molecular basis of cancer, also as we said before, it is non-lethal genetic damage, which means it is not compatible with life. The meaning of non-lethal, it does not cause frank death all of a sudden. Clonal expansion of a precursor cell. Uh, many of you have asked me about the clonal uh, attacks by the G6BD, but we are not using this line in treatment anymore. We are based now on receptors or hormonal affection or cellular um, sensitivity to radiation. So clonality is almost obsolete in the methods of diagnosis and prognosis or treatment as well. So speaking back to the genes, we have four classes of genes involved, which are the oncogenes in the form of proto-oncogenes, tumor suppressor genes, gene regulating apoptosis and DNA repair genes. And we give example for this at the P53 gene, which is the polisman of the cell that go on to the cell and check the DNA formation at two checkpoints. What is ploidy? It is the number of chromosomes in each cell, referred to as a sample of N. So N equals 23 chromosomes. The gametes are haploid, which means it's just one N. While somatic cells, it are all our body cells are diploid DNA, 2N. Excess ploidy means malignancy, which is more than the 2N, maybe 3N, 4N, 5N, up to 6 or 9N. The differentiation in the ploides, which mean some cells have 3N, some cells have 4N, or some cells have 5N, it's called polyploidy, difference in the ploidy, which indicates the more the aggression or the aggressiveness of the tumor. Tumor metastasis, how does it start? First, invasion of the cell membrane, the epithelial cell membrane. Then detachment from the cells, attach it to this membrane, degradation of the membrane, migration of the tumor cells, vascular transmission, either lymphatic or blood, adhesion molecules, and chemokines. The last two points are the regulators. Adhesion molecules and chemokines are the regulators of this steps of metastasis. So simply, invasion done by detachment from the surrounding cells, attach it to the membrane, then dissolving of the membrane, then migration of the tumor cells, then vascular dissemination through adhesion molecules and chemokines. This is a picture to illustrate what we said before, cellular detachment, then dissolving of the membrane and crossing over through it to start vascular invasion, which is going to be blood invasion in cases of sarcoma or lymphatic invasion in cases of carcinoma. Criteria of malignant cells microscopically is very, very, very important and very illustrative. 
there are four criteria, which is pleomorphism, cells are uniquely in shape and size, hyperchromesia, where the nucleus is dark and large, mitosis, presence of mitotic figures which are not present normally, and loss of cellular polarity, which means the organization and the normal arrangement of the cells. It's etiological aspects of neoplasia. What are the causes? We said the molecular basis, which are the genes. But what is the etiological factors or aspects? First, carcinogens. Like what? Like chemical substances, like viral oncogenes. Chemical substances are acting in two ways. First, initiation, which is induction of certain irreversible changes in the genome of the cell. It just makes a defect. But this defect alone is not enough. It must take the other step, which is promotion. It comes from proliferation. This defect must be proliferated so that cancer initiates or the cancer step itself starts. So the chemical substance act by two steps or two methods. First, just initiation. It just makes an insult. If this insult is not proliferating, so there is no cancer cell. But if it's promoted, so the cells are able to proliferate, then then cancer will develop. Others are viral oncogenes, DNA viruses and RNA viruses. Of course, our DNA viruses are more and extremely serious. And that's why hepatitis B virus causes more cancer in its prognosis than hepatitis C because it's the only hepatitis virus with a DNA genome. So viral oncogenes are known as etiological aspect of neoplasia or cancer. Um, the most serious ones are those of the DNA content or nucleic acid. Radiation carcinogenesis, all of us know that radiation acts in two ways. First, stimulation of oxygen-free radicals, which destroy the ATP and affect the mitochondria so the cell action or behavior changes. The other one is by causing EAO, which is end arthritis obliterans. EAO in itself is not an insult, but it causes sort of ischemia, so ischemia can cause cellular insults in many ways, and so it can progress to genetic defects or cellular loss uh, in part of its gene, and so this proliferation can affect or can affect the cells. They are not alone, as we said before, just a sort of insult, a promoter or initiator. Hormones, they can cause tumor initiation, but may act as promoters. Hormones per se cannot affect, cannot affect sorry, uh, the cells directly. Example for this is estrogen. It can cause endometrial hyperplasia, but it's not alone. It must be unopposed. The androgens can cause prostatic carcinoma if they are also unopposed or taken for a long time or not to be reversed. It's just a step if they are continuously acting on the tissue without any stoppage or any cessation of their effect, it's gonna be proceeded to carcinoma frame. Co-carcinogens, like what? Like the age, sex, diet, environmental and hereditary factors. Some tumors are common in young age, some are in common in adult age, some common in males, some common in females, some are related to dietary habits like in Asia. It is very common to have cancer colon because they ate raw fish food. Environmental and hereditary factors like bases with loss of iodine in the air are common having thyroid adenomas, which can proceed to carcinoma, for example. Okay. Laboratory diagnosis of neoplasia. First and the most unique or the key master of diagnosis is the biopsy specimen. I'm gonna take a biopsy and I'm gonna take a look about it. I'm gonna examine it. Uh, it might be in a stained paraffin section or frozen section. I can do a fine needle aspiration if the lesion is superficial and I can see it and I can hold it like in thyroid nodule or press nodules. Cytological examination, mostly in body fluids. Uh, I do centrifuge, I take the precipitant and then I'm gonna spread it on a glass slide, I'm gonna examine it. 
DNA flow cytometry for the ploidy thing I said before and tumor markers which is a very huge panel of diagnostic tumor markers the main ones just a very very small example carcino embryonic antigen the CEA alpha fetoprotein AFP and prostatic specific antigen S BSA the carcinium embryonic antigen is very common in tumors of the GIT. It's also used nowadays to differentiate between smokers and non-smokers. And their percent of having the possibility of a lung cancer. Alpha-fetoprotein is very specific to hepatocellular carcinoma and some ovarian tumors. Prostatic-specific antigen is sure specifically for Markers localized within the tumor cells, it's more specific than the previous panel. The estrogen receptors in breast carcinoma, cytokeratin in epithelial tumors, epithelial membrane antigen in also epithelial tumors, vimentin in mesenchymal or connective tissue tumors, desmin in muscle tumors. That's what we have today. Best of luck and see you soon. Thanks.